Hi there, welcome back to the channel, Eric here. So today's video, I'm gonna bring you guys back up to speed in terms of what I've been doing with this Lotus sitting behind me. And as you can see, I finally have my camera with me and I'm inside the garage again. Uh, so basically taking a step back, at the beginning of the year, I decided to undertake the last major phase for the car. Uh, I want to get the last major set of mods put on it. So I took the car down, put it up onto the jack stands, which by the way, is a huge pain in the ass for Lotuses. But, and honestly, the hard part about keeping all these like, you know, constant projects going and doing this type of car stuff, when you have a full-time job and basically a life outside of just cars, and you don't do it full-time, it's very difficult. I mean, the only way you can do it is through sheer determination and sacrifice. So every spare minute and every spare time I get, I try to come up here and try to wrench on this thing whenever I can. Um, obviously, it's taking a little bit longer than I thought. I mean, I wanted to get it done by the end of January. It's already mid-February. Of course, in the beginning, I wanted to do a good amount of stuff, but then that sort of uh, snowballed into even more stuff. But anyway, a combination of that is where I'm at now. Um, progress is still pretty good. I think I hopefully finish by the end of February instead. I don't know, knock on wood. Philosophical stuff aside, um, I think today's video, I'm gonna have to do a combination of catching guys up onto what I've been doing and also showing you what are the next steps. So before I start, let's actually rewind the tape and uh, go through a small montage of pictures I've been taking just so you know what I've been up to so far. good huh scoop scoop also got my dog blue back in the garage of course the ever-present co-host it's kind of strange filming again but let's go ahead and get into it so for today's agenda what I have to do is install hopefully this new uh, filler neck so this is actually a motorsports grade filler neck I bought it from Pro Alloy UK uh, it's made if you can look at this arrangement here this thing is made for a tough jug so it's like a quick release, tough jug, motorsports, fast fill setup. But of course you can still use it with a normal uh, fuel pump. And the reason why I went with this setup is because I also changed out the fuel tank in the Lotus. So I took out the stock one, which is, one second. So here's a stock steel fuel tank. I think this thing's only about 38 liters in capacity or something like that. So basically, as you guys saw in the previous montage uh, pictures, one of them was, of course, a new upgraded Pro Alloy uh, aluminum fuel tank, and that thing is 54 liters, and it's also baffled, so that combats, of course, fuel surge and all that stuff and starvation. So that's already installed in the car. I had to do that twice. And the only difference between the two fuel tanks was simply in their fuel fill outlet diameter. The first one had a US spec outlet diameter, and that thing was about an inch and a quarter. Uh, the UK ones are a little bit bigger. So then, of course, I also saw this field neck, this fancy field neck that I want to upgrade to. And the proper way to do it is, of course, to change the fuel tank's outlet to match this one, which is a UK spec 1 and 5 eighths inch diameter uh, outlet. So it's not that much bigger, but it is a tiny bit bigger. Hopefully a little bit more flow in terms of filling up faster. Uh, so the only way to do that right was to change out the fuel tank itself, go with this outlet, and also buy a new Lotus OEM spec UK spec uh, fuel hose to connect the two. So that's where I'm at today. I'm on my second tank. So of course I added even more problems because adapting the UK spec fuel neck to the US spec fuel cup is not the same thing. Uh, this thing actually protrudes at a different angle. So I actually just had this thing chopped and re-welded to hopefully fit the connecting fuel fill hose better. So I'm about to go throw this in the car and mock it up and see if it does line up. And what I mean by the thing not connecting up properly is the US spec cars they have a completely different fuel cup and door setup, right? So this is what the US one looks like. It has this big plastic uh, cup inside. So when you mount this thing to the back of the US spec fuel cup, it's at a weird angle and the hose was not able to connect. 
So I'll show you that right now in this picture. Here I am, baby. Come on and take me. Uh, but yeah, I modified this thing, had it rewelded. So let's see if this thing actually fits now. All right, so this right here is a Lotus OEM uh, UK spec fuel, fuel hose. I already put the neck back on the car, back into the cup right there. And then down there, see that thing with the blue tint to it? The blue stuff is actually the bladder in the fuel tank itself, but that is my fuel tank, that is the outlet. So my fears have been confirmed. Although the new angle of the fuel neck is nice, it's pretty much in line with the hose itself because before it was like pointing this way. But you can see now that because of it, it's actually way further out and the hose is back there. So we need to bring this whole thing back in on this plane. So I have to go take this neck off again. I could probably uh, put the hose on right now, but it's definitely gonna kink right here. And uh, that's just not the best way to do it. So the reason why I've undertaken this winter project, so to speak, is to address the last big remaining items for the car before I feel like it is fully upgraded and complete to my liking. And one of the things on that list is redoing the entire interior. And that's because Lotus, I think, cut a lot of corners, cut a lot of costs when it came to the interior. There's a lot of uh, plastic throughout. Like for example, these door sills here is just a giant slab of plastic. Uh, the stock shifter, which is not that by the way, was extremely wobbly and loose. It like shook the entire console every time you uh, tried to shift. So of course when these Exige S's came out, they were about MSRP, I think 65K. So in order to keep it around that price range, they had to cut corners in certain areas. I think all the money that Lotus really spent on this car was in the body and in the chassis. That's one thing Lotus is supreme at, and that is the chassis design, I think. So of course, if they started to enhance interior, if they added better materials and all that stuff, this car probably would have easily been 100K out the door at that point. So, but anyway, that's exactly what I'm trying to revisit to enhance myself. And the second major part to this project is the engine itself. I'm trying to get some more power out of it. As you can see, the stock energy cooler is completely off right now. So if I can get this car to around just a little bit under 300 horsepower with this power to weight ratio, I think it'll be a very, very fun car. Anything more than that will be kind of a handful to manage, but because these cars do weigh right at 2000, if not a little bit under, um, you can see that my new upgraded intercooler is right here. This was actually the first thing that I started working on and it's probably gonna be the last thing I'm gonna throw in. You can see that I've installed this nice carbon fiber three chambered uh, intercooler shroud and that's because there's gonna be additional ducting going into these side vents here. And another thing about this intercooler that you see here versus a stock one, which is in that garbage pile over there somewhere is the actual design and makeup of the intercooler itself. So as you guys know, an intercooler is just a giant heatsink, And this one is actually a bar and plate design. And the stock one is a tube and fin design. So when air actually hits the core, you're actually getting a lot more surface area in terms of where the cooling can happen. Um, and as for tube and fin, of course, instead of having this nice uh, cross section here, you just have a small, tiny uh, tube. And it's stuff like that that gives you overall better cooling capacity. So we'll see how that works out. So last week I finished installing this new shifter, which I'll show you next. And that involved mostly adjusting these two cables, which are brand new. Uh, and then I'm over here in the engine compartment, tightening up the cables from this side. That's the transmission right there. Uh, so I had to spin out both of these threads, about 13 to 12 threads on this side and also this side. That top cable right here is a gear shift cable. The bottom cable is the cross gate cable, which basically controls the left and right movement of the shifter. So I bought these two big ass wrenches. This is a 27 millimeter, this is a 24 millimeter. And now let me actually talk about the shifter itself. But first let me do a cool move, move this thing out the way. All right, it kind of looks like something outside of the Terminator, but it's extremely rigid, very, very sturdy, unlike the stock shifter. Uh, let me go ahead and actually show you guys what the throws look like. It does have a 15%, I believe, reduction in throw, so it's a small, short shift kit. I think they also offer something like around 33% or something like that, but I didn't want to go too short. I didn't want to make it too notchy. I'm trying to find that proverbial rifle bolt actuation, so to speak. So that is third right there. Back to neutral, back to fourth. It's a little bit awkward trying to do this while reaching into the car, but that's fourth. And now to get this thing into reverse, flip this up, which then uh, basically, see that? That's for the reverse. Come over here to the left, flip that up, slide it all the way over, and then go up into reverse. There we go. 
Here's another look on the passenger side of the new shifter. So the entire console here is all part of the new shifter arrangement. This is what the cross gate uh, assembly looks like. And I also swapped in a new uh, satin silver e-brake handle to match the indicators I got. These are from Elise Parts in the UK. And there you go, focus. So that's a nice touch to the interior. And also while installing this shifter, I redid the sheathing on the wiring harness that I've run through it. So it looks a lot cleaner, a lot better. I mean, the previous stock one was just like the typical plastic corrugated sheath that you normally get. Super ugly, but now, the stuff is from Painless Wiring, and it's the classic braid. Looks a lot better. And check out the sound system that's inside the car. Super sick. Uh, this is like the only mod that came with the car itself. Everything else was stock, and I love it. I mean, a lot of people like to take out the sound systems in these cars to keep things, you know, lightweight and whatnot. But it is still predominantly a street car for me. You know, that's why I'm retaining the AC and all that stuff. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you gotta have some good tunes. And the subwoofer definitely has some slap to it. And another thing that I did, as you guys probably saw from one of the photos, is the transmission was dropped. Uh, so that's a pain in the dick to do on these cars. It is not easy to do. So kind of the process goes like this to drop the transmission. First, you have to take off the entire suspension setup on the driver's side. All the stuff here, all the arms had to come off, coil lever had to come off. Um, and then you had to disconnect the drive shaft or the half shaft on the passenger side, disconnect all four motor mounts, lean the engine all the way down, and then carefully maneuver it out of this hole here while also raising the car up as high as possible. So uh, not an easy task, especially when you don't have a lift. Another thing I can show you is 